You know, given just G20, I got to ask you, you know, there, there's this whole kind of China plus one strategy that a lot of economies are trying to implement here right now. How do you think that's going to really impact overall just supply chains and your EM outlook? Yeah, so certainly that is the natural consequence of a couple of things. China's share of global exports is quite large and has probably reached natural limits from a global perspective and even for China's own strategy in terms of how it can create growth. Uh, with the change in diplomatic relations going on globally, we now have an environment where it creates the opportunity. The poster child of this has obviously been Vietnam and everyone understands that story. But as global companies are less willing to invest in China as the source of expansion of capacity, then the ASEAN region in particular and Asia at large obviously is the net beneficiary. That's going to create significant investment, which is the most volatile part of GDP. It accelerates growth and creates enduring growth potential and the incomes that follow. Right. So is there any way of china itself as it grapples with what's going on with the property side of things to replace that engine of growth then for them with something else because it's not the old playbook is it absolutely so this is the key challenge for china so its old model was exports driven first uh, a related investment boom which brought along a parallel property boom all three have probably reached their natural limits so where does china go next there's the real challenge for China is to move towards a services orientation and to grow consumption. To grow consumption, it needs to grow household income. That requires jobs. So it then becomes what are the uh, industries that China can invest in. There's a plethora. For example, if we think about the property sector, China still has significant savings. With property being a less attractive asset in the eyes of the average Chinese citizen, where is that money going to go? The financial services ind industry needs to become more sophisticated. FinTech is an example of that. Healthcare is another example of an industry that can drive services, innovation and jobs. Uh, the other part to your thesis that I want to get into, because not a lot of people are convinced that the U.S. manages a soft landing, mm -hmm. you don't think that's going to be the case? No, no, I think it's unlikely. But what's telling you that right now? Because that's not very obvious in the data. Right. So, well, this is the interesting thing, is that um, we just did a, a, a global webinar with clients for myself and clients on exactly that issue. And the point that I was making in that call was that the inversion of the yield curve happened a little less than a year ago and triggered an enormous expectation of recession everywhere. We talked the last time I was here about the most predicted recession. Where is it? But if you look at the typical lags between the inversion of a yield curve and the deterioration of the fundamental data, whether it be uh, consumer sentiment, whether it be lending conditions, all of these things, it takes time. Now, what's interesting is if you were to look at lending conditions, the, the Fed uh, surveys, you'll find they're very, very tight at recessionary levels right now. If you look at um, uh, Michigan consumer sentiment, Sentiment. It's at recessionary levels right now. What's actually confused people is the market's going up. The market tends to want to explain things under the lens of however the market's performing. If the market's going up, there's a bias towards let's tell positive stories and look at positive data. If the market's going down, I assure you people will be more willing to right. entertain this story. Uh, sure. You look at markets and you yep. see that actually it's not that broad based. It's quite narrow in terms Absolutely. of lifting things. Okay, that's yep. one part of it. Yep. But nobody knows where this recession would come from? Would it be coming from banks' exposure to commercial real estate, which yeah. is a big, big issue? But it always comes from left field, doesn't it? Right, so would right. it be financially based or would it be consumer based? That's the question for me. Right. So I think the, the logical trigger here is probably the asset liability mismatch that's embedded in global markets, but particularly the US economy. What do I mean by that? If you look at um, the rapid acceleration of interest rates, you have an environment where we saw in the regional banking crisis that is, for now, resolved that you had a number of organisations that were designed for interest rates to stay lower for longer. And it's reasonable for companies to plan that way because that's what they were told was going to happen. As it rapidly uh, ratchets up, they have these assets that are pricing down because as the yield goes up, we price down these uh, bond assets and they have an issue on funding. If you think about the commercial real estate market, the same thing will happen. And so ultimately, it's financial stress triggered by higher rates and the, the lack of sustainability of the historical model that's going to drag us into the next recession.